Wing 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. This is our homecoming, so it's definitely going to be a pretty packed environment. We're going to have a big crowd there. They're going to have a huge crowd there. They've been there before. They've done it, and they know they can pull it off in the end. You know, don't let the game get too much bigger than us. We want them to be who they are. Columbia City is a good team, so I'm looking forward to the competition, and they're not going to back down, so I'm looking forward to the fight. Speaking of fights, the nature boy, pro wrestling legend Ric Flair saying it best to be the man, you got to beat the man. As the reigning conference champ, the Cardiac Kids of Columbia City, they came into this season as the man sitting atop the throne in the Northeast State. But this fall, New Haven out to knock off those Eagles and bring home some hardware of their own. With that said, we bring in Josh A. and who's got your highlight zone game of the week. Josh. Well, Glenn, statistically speaking, this matchup like looking into a mirror. Both teams ranked in the top 10 of the 4A state poll. Both teams undefeated at 5-0, and both teams led by high-powered offenses averaging over 40 points a night. Columbia City at New Haven, it is your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Columbia City averaging 49 points a game. That is number one among all 4A teams in the state of Indiana. New Haven, though, not too far behind the Bulldogs, putting up 42 points a night, good for seventh best in 4A. Up, but tonight wasn't exactly a barn burner. We pick it up in the second quarter, still scoreless, until this, Trey Bates putting New Haven on the board from nine yards out. But a field PAT would make it just a 6-0 game. Columbia City answering right back. That's Grayson Bradbury to Stratton Fuller. Fuller, a one-handed grab. you got to be kidding me. And an extra point will put Columbia City up 7-6. And oh, baby, we got ourselves a defensive struggle. Still 7-6 answering the fourth quarter. That changes right here as a Johnny Washington. Number six puts six on the board for New Haven. A two point conversion would make it a 14 to seven game. And Washington, this guy would have himself a night. Stepping up big time on offense and defense, including this pick right here, especially with New Haven dealing with some injuries. Mylon Graham actually going out in the second half of this game. Meanwhile, New Haven's defense after that pick would come up with another stop. and They would break the backs of Columbia City right here. It's Bates. Breaking loose from 60 yards out, and New Haven still unbeaten at 6-0. They are also in the driver's seat of the NE8 title chase with a 21-7 win over Columbia City. Discipline, man. Next man step up, and we all came to fight. It was a team effort, to, and it, we all did it, man. It, it felt good. Man, I cried. I cried after that, man. It felt real good. You know, I tra just transferred over here, and I, you know, I'm in my new home, man. I made a big play for my guys, man. It feel good. Just came as, as one. We got a lot of leaders that stepped up. We got a slogan that's we over me. We don't like, we don't give up on, on each other. We just stick through it. Guys were getting hurt. We had some little things get dinged up. Next man played, and you couldn't tell a difference who was in there. They did a great job with a good team win. Next up, New Haven is at Belmont next Friday, while Columbia City hosts East Noble. Glenn, take it away. All right, speaking of East Noble, down at the courtyard, we got the Knights jousting with the Knights. East Noble at Norwell, second quarter. It's Norwell, oh, well, the special teams were special here. Gary Riley takes a kickoff back, 85 yards. That would put Norwell on the board. However, they were down 28 to seven at that point. Later in the second, East Noble matriculating the football down the field. It's Xander Brazel to Jordan Borders. That's a first down, and the ball keeps on moving for Luke Amstutz in that offense. Right before the half, Dylan Krell punches it in for the TD. Krell had 21 carries for 157 yards and a pair of TDs in East Noble. No problem at Norwell, 49-15. The victory for East Noble. At Leo, the Lions coming off a 14-7 win at East Noble last week. Purple Pride hosting Belmont. Leo's first play from scrimmage. They give it to Hayden Mons, and that is a good game plan. Mons with a touchdown here. He had 92 yards on the ground and a pair of TDs as Leo just like that up 7-0. Second quarter now, it's Kyler Decker going to the big guy Brock shot. Decker with a nice night. He was 11 of 11 passing for 153 yards and three passing TDs. A few plays later on this drive, it's Brett, don't call me Brent Fuller. Brett Fuller with the touchdown, 14 to zero. And then you're gonna see Mons. We mentioned he had two touchdowns. Here is the second of those two. Leo, no problem at Belmont, against Belmont, I should say. 40 to zero over the Braves. 
Last game in the NE8, Huntington North earning its first win indicator last Friday night. Could the Vikes keep it rolling against visiting DeKalb? Uh, in short, not so much. Caden Hinkle with the two-yard touchdown run for DeKalb. The Barons up seven zip early, and then it's Hinkle who's having a nice season on the ground. He's in the end zone again, 14 zip Barons, and it is DeKalb victorious in this one, your final 49-13. Uh, we're talking about one of the biggest games in the area tonight. Snyder at Homestead picked this one up in the third quarter. 17-14 Snyder Homestead's Henry Knipscher under the tutelage of Ron Reha kicks the 35 yard field goal and we're tied at 17 all. Homestead's deep, bending not breaking here on a fourth down. Snyder can't convert. It's Wyatt Little coming up big and that's a turnover on downs. We're tied 17 all after regulation in OT. Snyder gets the ball first and they put it through the uprights. This field goal gives the Panthers a 2017 lead, but that would leave the door open for a homestead and they would slam it shut. Brett Fox, the gritty senior in for the touchdown and that's a walk off win as Homestead knocks off the number one team in the 5A state poll. 23-20 in OT. Uh, this was huge, you know, number one in 5A. Um, we worked really hard this week, and then after those first two touchdowns, it was a little down, but then it's like, you know, the leaders led, they got the mindset right, and the defense just came out, executed, the offense executed. It was just a great team win. You know, I think the only ones that thought we could win this were the kids in that locker room, and they believed that all week, and we kept preaching it. You know, we put one together, we could beat anybody. And so uh, that's what I'm proud of, and they bought in. They keep buying in. You know, we had some, we've gone through some diverse or adversity, and just to see them overcome and be successful is really, really satisfying. Oh man, that shakes up the SAC. Hey, defending state runner-up Carroll, the reigning SAC champs, ranked 12th in this week's 6A poll. They were hosting Sherwood Haydock and Wayne. This was a turnover fest early. Wayne's Adrian Wooten, the first of his two interceptions in the first quarter alone, and it was tied 0-0 after one. However, in the second quarter, the scoring gets going. Marcus Cooper to Harold Mack, and that is a touchdown. And folks, the Wayne Generals Led this one seven zip. In fact, this baby was a dog fight throughout. We see you, Harold Mack. Yeah, General's up seven zip. Here comes Carroll, though. Jimmy Sullivan rolling out and finding Braden Steely. This is a 13 yard touchdown to tie it at seven. This one closer than some might expect, but Carroll does pull it out against Wayne. 17 to 10, Chargers over Generals. Wenger coming off a great second half comeback win against Homestead last Friday. The Saints marching into Spooler Stadium to face Northrop. Second quarter action. Northrop capping a long drive here from five yards out. That's Marcus Logan Jr. for a touchdown. The Bruins on the board, their first TD of the night. However, it was 35 to 7. Bishop Dwenger at that point. Dwenger looking good here. Ethan Springer. To Carter Minix, one of the top receivers in the SAC. It was 42 to 7 at the half, and Dwenger goes on to win by a final of 42 14. Huge game in the SAC's B division. Conference leading Bishop Lures at Chambers Field to face Northside. And when you face Northside, this is the guy you gotta bottle up. Tay Johnson now playing quarterback this season. Tay gets loose, the cutback here, and uh, yeah, Marcus Freeman's gonna like this kid, whatever he ends up playing at Notre Dame. It's a touchdown. However, Lures up 17 to 14 at that point. They would answer Wood the Knights, Cohen McKenzie to Isaac Zay, and the Zay A kid is in for the touchdown. 14, uh, 24 to 14 Lures, but this was a back and forth ball game throughout the night. Short field thanks to a Jamari Pearson pick. It's Tay getting in the end zone again, but in the end, Lures wins 30 28. That, folks, is a huge win for the Knights in the SAC standings. Final stop in the SAC, both Southside and Concordia looking for their first win of the season. Who would walk away with the dub at Zollner? First quarter, it looked like the Archers were marching. Javon Irby with a big run on that drive to pick up a first down for the guys in green, but Concordia defense bending, not breaking. On fourth and goal, they stuff them, so we're still knotted at 0-0 after the turnover on Dow's good defense from Concordia. Concordia driving themselves, but it's Brian Eldridge with the pick right there. A lot of defense in these highlights. There would be some scoring later, but it would mostly be Southside putting up points as the Archers get their first win of the Andre Goodwell era, 35-6 at Zolner. 
Staying in the confines of the Summit City, Blackhawk Christian hosting Park Tudor. Park Tudor undefeated, ranked fifth in 1A. It was a tough hill to sled for Blackhawk Christian. That was first quarter action. William Harris with the touchdown, 13 zip Park Tudor. How about DJ Gordon now to Grant Ludwig? Hits him about the, at the 10, and uh, it's a touchdown right there. 20 to 0, Park Tudor on that 20 yard score. Later, you'll see DJ Gordon decide to pull it down, and Gordon would elude the defense here. He gets in. It was 48 to 7 at the half, and Blackhawk on the end of a tough one tonight. They fall 62 7 to Park Tudor. We are going to take a quick break, but coming up, a huge night in the ACAC is Bluffton looking to stay undefeated. We're going to head to Fred Park Field for that, plus a rivalry renewed as South Adams and Adams Central square off at the landing strip. Not only that, in the NECC, West Noble came into the night undefeated. Could the Chargers quest for a conference title be derailed by the Railroaders in Garrett? we got that, plus we'll hit up Heritage, we'll hit up Woodland, Busco, and much more all coming your way on Fort Wayne's number one sports show, The Highlight Zone. We're the Bluffs and Tigers, and you have more Highlight Zone coming your way next. If you look at uh, Google Maps and check out the ACAC, it turns out that only eight miles actually separate South Adams from Adams Central. It's one of the best rivalries in all of Northeast Indiana, no doubt about it, but it's been the Jets who have been flying high in recent years. Adams Central looking for its fifth straight win over the Starfires, and we picked this one up in the first quarter. AC doing damage early. Keegan Bloom. Bloom goes the dynamite. 15 carries, 111 yards, two TVs for Bloom, and AC up six zip. They were not done, not by a long shot. Michael Mosher's team just humming. How about this? Jack Hamilton to Trevor Curry. Spicy. Curry with the touchdown. 24 yards on that pitch and catch, and AC continues to roll 48 to 0 over their oldest rival. Lufton, the Tigers still undefeated. Brent Kunkel and the pride of the Parlor City ranked second in this week's 2A state poll. Gotta love it. Braxton Betancourt hooking up with Andrew Hunt and that dog will hunt 46 yards on the touchdown and Bluffton stakes itself to a seven zip lead. They weren't done. They would do it with some defense as well. You're going to see the ball hit the turf here. Uh, it would be recovered by Southern Wells, but that's a tackle for loss thanks to the Bluffton defense. And then Bluffton has so many facets to that run game. Cooper Craig doing it here. What a revelation he's been for Bluffton as Bluffton continues to stay unbeaten. 56-3, the final against Southern Wells, and they will head to Heritage next week. Will the Tigers and what should be a good one? Speaking of Heritage in Monroeville, Heritage looking for a bounce back win as the Patriots going out of conference to host LaPel. The Bulldogs would not lie down tonight, however. Second quarter, it was 7-zip Heritage. That's Devin Craig to Bryce Burris, and that would tie it at 7-all. But when Heritage was challenged, they would respond on this one. Caleb Abbott slamming his way into the end zone. Abbott with the short touchdown plunge, and Heritage takes a 14-zip lead. They would not look back. You'll see Kobe Meyer versatile at the QB position, rolling out, finding Zeke Litchfield. Zeke the freak in for the touch. And Heritage doubles up LaPel. 28-14, your final in Motown. Out of Etzler Field, Woodland with a 30-point win last week on the road. Could the Warriors stay hot against an improving Jay County program? Third quarter action, looking like uh, Woodland's in business. Braden Smith from Ty Loudon. What a catch for Smith. And then they do a little more pitch and catch action. Loudon to Carter Fleek, and my man was on Fleek. Great touchdown catch from Fleek in the end zone, but it's only a 15 point lead, 29 to 14. Would that lead be safe? It would not. Jay County's AJ Myers breaking tackles for the big gain. Later on the drive, you're going to see Myers with the short touchdown run for the Fighting Zagundas and Jay County with a victory at Woodland tonight. 34-29 Patriots over Warriors. 
In the NECC, West Noble and Garrett, the Chargers undefeated, ranked 13th in this week's 3A state poll. Seth Pruitt been doing it all season, generally rushing the football, but he gets the reception there for the touchdown. And yeah, Seth Pruitt into the end zone. Coach DePue doesn't like it. He's down 7-0. He would like this though, second quarter. Cameron Rubel with the short touchdown run and we're knotted at seven. Then watch this, Parker Skelly. Watch the Garrett receiver haul this one in for the touchdown. However, West Noble would eventually win 34-15, and that sets up a huge game with Lakeland next Friday. Let's go to Turtle Town. Busto putting up, oh, just 52 points last Friday in a win over Prairie Heights. How would they fare against Fremont? Well, the answer would be pretty good. However, Fairmont, uh, Fremont looked pretty good in the early going. Carmine. Maryland with a field goal at the end of this drive, and it was Fremont up three zip. Now, second quarter, Busco starts to take over. Angelo Ianasili, Ianasili rather, with the touchdown run, it's 18-3. Later in the second quarter, Brady Lawrence would hook up with Gavin Holzenbeck. That is a touchdown, and Busco no problem with Fremont, although Fremont did score first in this one, 46 to three. In the NLC, John Reedaboo and the Wawasee Warriors hosting 4-1 Northridge and Wawasee doing work early. Luke Kime finding Donovan Blair and Blair knows what to do with it. That's a big pickup and a first down to get in the red zone for Wawasee and Wawasee, well, they would give it to Blair for a touchdown. However, that would be the lone touchdown of the night for Wallacey as Wallacey falls to Northridge 14 to seven. Final stop for high school football, it's the Bart Curtis Bowl. Warsaw off to a 5-0 start for the first time since 2001. Tigers on the road to face uh, Coach Curtis's old team, Mishawaka. 7-3 in the second quarter, but Mishawaka finishing the half strong. Mishawaka leading, and that was Brady Fisher with a touchdown, 25 yards out, 14-3 Mishawaka. After a three and out by Warsaw, it's Mishawaka again. Fisher finding Ethan Bryce and Bryce would scamper 62 yards for the touchdown and Warsaw is handed its first loss of the year. Tigers fall on the road 34-11. Stay tuned, your gem of the night and more Highlight Zone is coming your way. We're the Leo Lions. Stick around, more Highlight Zone after the break. Yeah. Hey, last Friday it was my man Brandon Logan with two in two. The Snyder safety with not one, but two pick sixes in the final two minutes of the second quarter, and that helping Snyder beat Carroll, earning Brandon the Highlight Zone's highest honor. So who will it be here in week six? I bet you have an idea. Your gem of the night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers, and we're talking a walk it off at Walters Stadium. What does the Fox say? Brett Fox, the senior, slamming it home for the touchdown in overtime as Homestead beats Snyder. Man, what a game. As Coach Chad Zolman said, maybe nobody outside the Homestead locker room thought Spartans could win it. They did, and that is your gem of the night, an OT win for Brett Fox and the Homestead Spartans. As for next Friday, that win really shakes up the SAC. We got SAC Rivalry Week next week. That includes Homestead at Carroll and the Battle of the Bishops as Lures host Swinger. In the NE8, East Noble is at Columbia City. We got a big one in the ACAC as undefeated Bluffton heads to Heritage. And in the NECC, Lakeland is at unbeaten West Noble. That will go a long way in determining your NECC Big Division champ. We got some Friday night college football as well. Maybe a Friday night game would bring some luck for Purdue. They hadn't beaten Wisconsin in 20 years. How about this? West Noble High School grad Julio Macias now kicking for Purdue. This is his first collegiate field goal attempt. And Macias, the former West Noble Charger, he knows what to do with it. We saw him do this on the highlight zone. Dude's got a leg. He boots it through for the first three points of the game for Purdue. Unfortunately, they wouldn't score a whole lot more. Wisconsin's Braylon Allen with a touchdown here and Wisconsin beats Purdue 38-17. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. We'll see you next Friday night for Week 7 action here in Northeast Indiana.